So in this video, we are going to be taking another look at setting up an AWS CloudFront CDN for your WordPress blog, utilizing W3 Total Cache in order to do that. And we'll do that for a blog that's currently running SSL. The first video I set up on this channel, oh geez, over five years ago, was about setting up a, a CloudFront CDN for your WordPress blog. As with all things in technology, things change very quickly. And this topic is no exception. So it was definitely time for a refresh of the content. So let's get into this. It's been a while since I've set up a CloudFront CDN. Uh, so I'm going to be kind of winging this as we as we go through this. I'll walk you through the process of doing it and hopefully that will show you how simple this truly is. Before we get into it, I've got a new blog, new personal blog that I have been playing with for a few years and it's currently running SSL as we can see here, HTTPS. The first thing you're going to want to do is go into your AWS Management Council and we'll start there. We are going to create a user, create a user group, and then we'll go into our WordPress blog and leverage W3 Total Cache to actually set up that CDN for us. If we go into our AWS Management Council, you'll see things have changed quite a bit over the last five years. You can see all the various services by clicking on the services icon up there and you'll have the, the different categories of services. You can see the recently visited services that you've been at. And I went into IAM and CloudFront just to play around with this a little bit. So we want to go into Identity Access Management, so we'll start there. And the first thing I want to do is set up a user. So click on Users under Access Management. You can see I've got two different users set up here. We are just going to add a new user. Uh, the username, let's call this Brewginner. All right, and the access key is going to be programmatic access. We'll go next to permissions. Um, add user to group, copy permissions from existing user, attach existing policies. I don't recall any of this. Um, uh, looks like I can set up a group here, so let's do this. Group name, uh, we will call this beginner as well. And I want to give it, I'm going to give it full administrator access, create group. All right, so we're going to add our new brew beginner user to the brew beginner group. Set permissions boundary, I don't think we need to do anything here. We'll just leave that as such. Next, tags. I'm not going to give it any tags. And our review. Username is beginner. We're giving it programmatic access. Permissions not set. And we're adding it to this group. So let's create it. Awesome. All right. So success, we've created the user shown below. This is going to show us our access key and our secret access key. And I'll show you that, guys what this looks like right now. Um, I'm not, this is just a, a test, test account I'm setting up, so uh, I don't have any problems showing you what the secret access key is. Normally you're not going to want to show this to anyone. Uh, but this is a very important step right here you need to download this uh, CSV file. And this CSV file is going to have your access key and your secret access key. So we're gonna download that. If you forget to do that step, you're not going to be able to set up the CloudFront CDN. Um, you need these credentials and this is the only time you're going to be able to get them. So make sure you download that CSV file after you create the user. So let's close this and I want to just double check something. So if I look at my users, I've got my beginner user and it looks like it's assigned to that group. It was just created. Now if I go into user groups here, 
I've got my beginner group. So I've done everything I needed to do. You set up the user, you can assign that user to the group and make sure it has programmatic access and you have downloaded your credentials. Now that we have that, we are going to go into our WordPress dashboard and make sure you have W3 Total Cache installed, which I do, uh, which is right here. And go to performance, let's go into general settings. Uh, and if you scroll down, I think it's about halfway down the page here, we should see, ah, or CDN. So you want to enable your CDN and your CDN type will be Amazon CloudFront. And if you click on the drop down here, make sure it's under origin pole, origin pole slash mirror, select Amazon CloudFront. Uh, you do not want it to be a push. You want it to be the pull. And once you've got that, that's all you need to do on this page. Uh, just do a uh, save settings and purge cache. You're going to get this error message, error message that says configuration issue prevents the CDM from working. The access key, secret key, blah, 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 fields cannot be empty. Step one is enabling that CDN from the uh, general page here, the general settings page. The second step is going into the CDN settings, which are found further down below within W3 Total Cache. So click on CDN, that will load our second page here. And we'll just walk through this pretty quick. You can leave all of these settings checked as the defaults. So general, this is telling you what it is that we're hosting within our CDN. In our case, we'll be hosting any attachments, includes files, uh, theme files, minified CSS, JavaScript, any custom files. And when we get into the configuration objects is what we're going to, how we're going to configure things here. So remember that file that we downloaded, you're going to need that now. And you can see here, we have our access key, our secret access key and the login link. So we're going to do this. We're going to capture that secret access key and you're going to paste it here. And then you're going to need your secret key, which is here. Copy that. And let's see here. Origin is going to be www.brugenner.com. We'll leave that as our website name. SSL support. Um, We'll leave it set to auto, determine the connection type. And then this last one here, replace site's host name with cloudfront.net or our C name. Um, we're, not gonna, we're not going to add a separate C name. We'll just use what it, what it creates for us. The only thing you really needed to add here is your access key and your secret key and make sure SSL support is set to auto. You'll come up here for the origin and we will create our distribution. So click that and it'll give us a message that it's being created. And we'll confirm that uh, within the AWS Management Council here in a minute. So we get a message that says, hey, it was created successfully. Let's go to our uh, AWS Management Council, get out, get out of Identity Access Management. Let's just go home here. And you'll click on CloudFront. And if you don't have it as recently visited, you can come into Services, select CloudFront, and it's right here. Click on that. And you'll see we just created a new distribution for www.brewgender.com.
and it is in the process of being deployed. Now, I think what we need to do is wait until that is fully deployed here. So we'll give it a few minutes to finish that. Uh, I'm gonna go back to my WordPress blog here. Oh, sweet, it already filled this in. Let me show you something. So if you recall, before we created Create Distribution, the uh, host name here was empty. And what you can see was after we created it, it populated this with what our new host name is going to be for our CDN. And if you look at this D80KU7, blah, blah, um, you can see it's this right here. It's that host name. So that is going to be where our CDN is, is uh, being pulled from. I'm going to test this while that distribution is still being deployed. I don't know if I have to wait for it to finish. I think I do, but let's try this. So let's test it. Yeah, so it's not deployed yet. We need to wait until that distribution is fully deployed and then we can test it out to make sure everything is working correctly. All right, so we are back here. It took all of probably two to three minutes to fully deploy this, dis this distribution. You can see it's enabled at this point here and we will go back to our WordPress dashboard um, within W3 Total Cache and we are going to test it out again. So hopefully this will work. Awesome, test passed. And let's save settings and purge our caches here. And you'll see up here content delivery not, or not you'll see up here. <laughs> So you'll see up here, content delivery network support via Amazon CloudFront is currently enabled. We should have everything that we need at this point. So what we wanna do is double check within our blog to make sure it's serving images from the CloudFront distribution. So if we go into my blog, I'm gonna refresh this. And what I'll do is I'm going to pull up just a, a blog post here. And uh, let's see here. We're going to go with this one. And I just want to come down here and find an image. So I've got a couple images here. Open this image and you can see it is serving it from this host from cloudfront.net. And it has reproduced all of my content uploads that I was hosting from my shared site to the CDN. So anytime someone clicks on one of those images, it's going to pull it from the CloudFront CDN versus my shared host. Uh, same with any theme files, JavaScript, CSS, it will be pulling all of that from your CloudFront CDN at this point. And that's all there really is to it. We have literally just stood up a CloudFront CDN for your WordPress blog. And oh, by the way, this is a blog that has SSL enabled for it. And yeah, I mean, you could see how easy it was. You're done. Uh, it, it really couldn't be easier. Hopefully you found this helpful, uh, this refresh video for 2022. And I guess that's it. We'll see you guys in the next video.